حيات أبوك هو حق تعال معي معليش لا يلزم الليل مسلم أنت تجي معي نمشي اطلع برا يا ابن العكروت You understood what he said? I gather enough that Montez is dead and the case is gone That fool of an Arab would come to me the moment he found Montez we might still have Armstrong But no he has to follow him all around the town and solemnly watch him pull off in the afternoon boat to Algeciras. How can you be sure it was Armstrong? Who else but? He knows what it's worth and he knows where to sell it. Two boats and a train and he's in London. He might fly. Oh, no, not him. Not our Mr. Armstrong. He hates planes. Nothing on earth would persuade him to take to the air. Tell me, when you had dinner with him, did he say anything about contacting you in London? Yes, I... I gave him my phone number. Well, it might help anyway. If you take the afternoon plane, you can get to him before he gets to Heinrich. But Heinrich is your partner. Surely you'll get the case eventually. As you say, Heinrich is my partner and we will get the case eventually. That means I only get a part of the proceeds. No, I have a better idea. I'm in touch with a syndicate in Amsterdam who are willing to pay me a sum equal to... Perhaps five years of working with Heinrich for the contents of that case. Always, of course, provided we could continue for five years without being caught. No, my way's better. I get all the profits and there's no risk. What if Heinrich finds out? If and when he finds out. We shall be a long, long way away. Honolulu, South America. Where would you like to go, Michelle? Nowhere. What do you mean by that? I've had enough of this whole business. You can handle Armstrong any way you like, but you'll have to do it without me. I won't do it. I tell you, I won't do it. Come now, isn't that a rather foolish attitude? After all, where would you be without your British passport? I know there must be some men who would be willing to accept you purely as a decoration, but I'm afraid I can't do that. I'm very fond of you, of course, but while you're with me and there's work to be done, you've just got to help me do it. If not, there are plenty of others willing to step into your shoes. What do you want me to do? That's better. You take the next train to London. I'll be there about 48 hours after you. I've got some things to attend to here. I nearly forgot. You'll need this, won't you?
How's it going, Mr. Collins? Just fine, Sammy, just fine. My wife enjoyed your last picture very much. So did the kids. My eldest boy, Avi, says he wants to be a stuntman just like you. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I suppose they keep you pretty occupied, eh? Yeah. I'll take a seat, sir. We're with you in a minute. All right. Goodbye, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. The sheriff, please. Oh, that's fine, Sammy. Much better. Going to the fights tonight, Mr. Collins? No, not me. I had enough fighting for one day. A meal, a hot bath, and early to bed. That's my ticket. <laughs> that's what you say. <laughs> I mean it this time. There you are, Sammy. Thank you, sir. Take it easy. Bye. my coat. Hmm? Not your coat, sir. That's what I said. Yeah, what the hell goes on, eh? That other guy is to take my coat. Mr. Collins. Why, he wouldn't... Oh, yes, of course, he's got a coat just like... Well, what the hell are you going to do about it? Eh? Look, I want my coat right away now, huh? Oh, what is it? You'll get your coat back, sure enough. Mr. Collins wouldn't do a thing like that deliberately. He's an old castle man. I've known him for years. Look, I want my coat now. Well, he lives a few minutes away from here off Belgrave Mews somewhere. Here we are. Here it is. And the phone number. I'll ring it, shall I? I don't care what you do, but do it quick. All right, sir. Don't appear to be home yet. Come to think of it, he did say something about getting a meal. Look, I'll, I'll ring it again a bit later, shall I, sir? Give it to me. What's the telephone number? I'll do it myself. Chelsea 9176. Of course, he may realize his mistake and come back here. Well, if he does, tell him to get in touch with me immediately. My name is Armstrong, and I'm leaving at the Whitehall Hotel. You'll find the telephone number in the phone book. Whitehall Hotel, yes, sir. And uh, don't make any mistake about it. Very good, sir. speaking. Huh? <laughs> you're kidding. Oh, wait a minute. No, you're, you're not kidding. Yes, yes, I remember you were, you were getting a shave. Yeah. Well, I, I'm very sorry about this. Uh, tell me, what's your address? Uh-huh. Okay, Mr. Armstrong, I'll, I'll bring it over in a couple of minutes. And I'm very sorry. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Armstrong, please. Mr. Collins calling. Oh, yes, Mr. Collins. Mr. Armstrong said you're to go straight up, number 26, second floor. Thank you.
Mr. Armstrong? Scotch on the rocks, I guess. Scotch on the rocks it is. I thought I might see Rex around here tonight. He's been in once. He said he'd be back after the fight. Well, what's that got to do with it? Mr. Rex has 500 smackers at four to one. The Callagher would lay the champ inside ten rounds. Oh, no. <laughs> after that fell in the sixth, he said he couldn't stand the strain. Champ, and Mr. Rex has won himself a couple of thousand pounds. I heard that, Mr. Murphy. Well done, Gallagher. Let's <laughs> all have a drink to the new champ. To the luck of the Irish. Sir, you're insulting my grandmother. <laughs> Two in. thousand quid. Now we've got to have a party. Drinks all around, Mr. Murphy. Count me out, Rex. Count you out? Yeah. Oh, that's impossible. Um, it can't be done. Why not? Because. <laughs> because why? Oh, because you're essential. You're a key man. Oh. What's a party without women? Who has all the women in his thing of it? Who has the girl's telephone numbers in his little black book? Why, <laughs> Chuck Collins, of course. You don't think I want you for your beautiful blue eyes, do you? Oh, no. It's all those lovely little film starlets you've got up your sleeve. Sorry, not tonight, oh, Rex. Come on, no. Chuck. Just one little peek at that little black book. I want to do Mr. Murphy here a favor. I want to put that money I won in his cash register. <laughs> More likely lose his license for him, you oh, mean. Come on, I'll find Okay. But you'll have to do your own fixing up. Oh, yes, I'll fix everything up. Sorry, Rex, I forgot. This isn't even my coat. I, I picked this up from some other fellow this afternoon. Senor Armstrong, Hotel Trieste, Tangier. But there, there, there is a... Michelle, Earl 6411. There is a dame out there. Let me see this, Oh, Rex. no, boy. I'm going to ring this little girl up and invite her to my party. Your telephone, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Look, Rex, we don't even know this girl. If she is a girl, she might be this, this fellow's grandmother. E A R 6411. You heard him, Mr. Murphy. You can bear witness to him slandering a poor, innocent girl. <laughs> Hello? Are you a grandmother, my dear? Hello? Who do you want? Is that me, Shell? Speaking. Who is it? A friend of Senor Armstrong. Who did you say? Senor Armstrong. 
Hotel Trieste Tangia. Well? Uh, we're throwing a party to celebrate a business deal. And I thought perhaps you might like to come along. I'm afraid I don't understand. Here, yeah, Rex, give me that. Hello, uh, look, miss, I, I'm sorry there's been a mistake. My friend shouldn't have phoned you. Uh, just a minute, Mr... What's your name? Uh, Collins. Mr. Collins, your friend mentioned a Mr. Armstrong from Tangier. Well, yes, but that was a mistake. Do you know him? Well, no, not really. You see, there's a man named Armstrong. Go on. Well, it's a rather long story. Never mind, you can tell me at the party. By the way, where is the party? It's right here, Count of Ten Club. Where exactly is that? On Beacon Street, uh, off Soho. But you needn't bother. You... Don't you want me to come to your party, Mr. Collins? Well, yes, yeah, you're, you're welcome, of course, but... Well, fine, then I'll see you there. Goodbye. No, what did I tell you? I knew it would work. Oh, dear. One woman's not going very far. Oh, we'll have to get some more. Look, Rex, I don't know what you've let me in no, for. No, no, but have another drink. Another drink for the maestro, Mr. Murphy. And your telephone directories, if you don't mind. Uh, you've got to do your stuff. You get me a treble chart. A treble what? A blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. <laughs> Whitehall Hotel. Hello, could I speak to Mr. Armstrong, please? Uh, I see. Just a moment. Can I have your name, miss? Just, say uh, a friend. I'll take over. You get the operator to try and trace the call. I'm sorry, miss, but Mr. Armstrong doesn't seem to be in at the moment. Can I get him to call you back? Who's that speaking? The manager, miss. Can I take a message? Last. Any luck? Very well, miss, thanks. Nothing doing, Inspector. It was an automatic exchange. Won't you join us for a drink, Michelle? Thank you, Mr. Collins. Uh, my friends call me Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. Sit right there. Now, what will you have? I'd like a vermouth and Campari bitter, please. Americano. Can you take care of that spade? Americano it is. I haven't heard of this place before. Oh, it's fairly new. And strictly membership, too. No, actually, it's... It's just an annex of Saul Bergman's gymnasium upstairs. It's quite convenient. Spade here pours the liquor into you, and Sal rubs it out on the massage table. Is um, Mr. Armstrong a member? No, and I would like to explain about that. You see, it all started with this coat. What do you make of this, Foss? All I know is that Armstrong left Tangier with the case. I checked very carefully on that, but it never reached the hotel. At least, according to Darek here. Yeah? Are you hinting I'd done a double cross? You would be very foolish to try. Heinz and I have done some very big deals together. This is probably one of the biggest. We shouldn't like anyone to spoil it for us, should we, Heinz? No, I wouldn't. And while we're on the subject of two timing, Foss, you didn't explain yet what you were doing in Tangier. It couldn't be that you were trying to corner this for yourself. Now, just a moment, Heinz. You seem to have forgotten that I run a perfectly legitimate import and export business. You're welcome to check my office files if you wish. I have. And they were strictly above board. But then you would see to that. Now, look. Would I have told you anything at all about Armstrong if I'd been intending to do this thing by myself? I don't know. You are on a good each-way bet. Either you collect a lot, 
Or you take a cut when we get the plates. When we get the plates. While we sit here cutting each other's throats, we get no place. What I want to know is, what do we do about this coat? Who's this fellow Collins? And what tie-up has he with Armstrong? I think you've got something there, Darak. This looks like a job for that secretary of yours. Only this time, we must make quite sure that she's working for all of us. Story, and here's the envelope. Is this all there was in the coat? Oh, I wouldn't know. I had no reason to go through the pockets. Are you suggesting I might have? <laughs> I'm not suggesting anything. But you're obviously more interested in Armstrong than I am. Mm, I have a reason to be. Why, a boyfriend? No. No, a, a kind of relation. What is a kind of relation? I thought you weren't interested in him. He's got my coat, remember? Are you quite sure it was his room you tried? I've only got the hall porter's word for it. Tell me, what exactly is worrying you? I have a feeling. A feeling that something has happened to him. <laughs> Silly of me, I suppose. Here. Drink up and let's go. Where to? The hotel. It's the only way to find out. What about your friend? <laughs> I don't think he's going to miss us. You see what I mean? <laughs> I uh, called to see Mr. Armstrong earlier, but he was out. Has he returned? Oh, just a moment. Your name, sir? Collins. Oh, Mr. Collins, of course. There's a Mr. Collins here for Mr. Armstrong. Yes. Very good, sir. Will you go up room 26? You're sure of that? Why, yes, sir. Number 26, second floor. All right. Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. There's some mistake. There's no mistake, Mr. Collins. This is Armstrong's room. I'm Inspector Meredith of Scotland Yard. Sit down, Mr. Collins. There's been an accident. Mr. Collins, your story about the coat seems plausible enough. Yeah, well, uh, Sammy the barber will verify it. Yes, I'm sure he will. But that doesn't answer the question. Where's your coat? It certainly isn't here. Well, maybe the guy who pushed Armstrong out of the window took it. What made you say he was pushed? I only spoke of an accident. Scotland Yard always go to so much trouble over an accident? These are routine matters. They're necessary before one can rule out all suspicion of foul play. Oh, and I'm a suspect, I guess, huh? Face the facts, Mr. Collins. The hall porter said that you came up to this room some ten minutes or so before Armstrong went through that window. He never saw you leave. I told you, the porter wasn't in the hall when I left. That's what you say. He says he never left the hall. Not since he came on duty. Look, maybe he was trying to cover up for himself or for the guy who was in this room with Armstrong when I knocked. Or maybe you just did a vanishing trick, like the girl who came upstairs with you just now. What girl was that? Don't try to be clever, Mr. Collins. The porter phoned through after you left him and said you were accompanied by a young woman. Who is she? What's more important, where is she? <laughs> Look, 
What kind of a fool do you take me for, Collins? You're trying to tell me that this girl is someone you only met this evening? A casual pickup, you don't even know her name? And that you dragged around here to wait while you collected your coat? What were you planning to do with it? Sit on it in the park? Something like that. All right, Mr. Collins. If your story's true, it should be easy to prove. But if you've got anything to add, it would be wiser to do it now. Does this mean I'm free to go? Yes, sir. Well, I warn you, you may have to answer further questions, so don't leave town without contacting me first. You can trust me, Inspector. I hope so. Oh, uh, may I take this with me? Uh-huh. Looked like all of Scotland Yard was up there. I'm sorry I ran out on you. Well, you must have had a pretty good reason. What about Armstrong? Is he dead? I don't know. I couldn't find out. The inspector wouldn't commit himself. Where have they taken him? University College Hospital, I imagine. It's only a stone's throw away from here. You want to go there? No. No, I confirm. Anyway, I've caused enough trouble for one evening as it is. What kind of a mess are you in? Just give me some clue as to what it's all about. I'd like to help you. Why should you? Oh, let's say I want to get my coat back. This is a nice piece of material, but I doubt very much that they'll let me keep it. You see, if the inspector kept it, it would be the same as accepting my story. And he hasn't done that yet. I imagine I must be number one suspect for pushing Armstrong out of that window. And that's one more reason for my curiosity. I'm going to be a suspect. I'd like to have some reason for my motive. I'm sorry. I, I know nothing. Why are you afraid of the police? You are, aren't you? Yes. Something like that. Like to tell me about it? Some other time. It's a long story. Is that the only reason you ran out on me? No. You don't want to talk about it? It isn't that I don't want to tell you about it. It's that I can't. Hmm. Well, where do we go now? Might help the driver if we gave him an address. Tell him to take him to your place first, and then I'll take him on from there. <laughs> I guess I can take a hint. Anyway, I know your phone number. You better take this, just in case you change your mind. Driver! address we last stopped at. Is that better? 
You'd make a very good nurse. No talking. Doctor's orders. You want me to feel better, don't you? Yes, but not this way. Are you comfortable? Just not if you are. You're not leaving. Yes, I am. It's getting late and you need some rest. But you haven't told me why you came back. That can wait. Where do you think you're going? Well, if you're going to leave, I'm going with you. Oh, Chuck, please, this is foolish. It's not so foolish if the two guys who beat me up are waiting for you at your place. Of course not. Why should they be? Well, you can answer that better than I can. Please, this is ridiculous. I shall be perfectly all right. Now, please stay here. Only if you stay with me. Come here. Sit down. Now, I am your invalid, right? Right. And uh, you want me to get better, right? Right. <laughs> All right. Now, right through there is a very nice little bedroom. There's a lock on the inside of the door. Through there is the kitchen. You find everything we need for breakfast. Oh, now, in case you're worried about your reputation, the uh, char lady comes every Tuesday and Friday, the landlord on the 28th. And uh, about the milkman. What about the milkman? Well, he's very discreet. <laughs> How are you feeling? Well, outside of a fractured spine, I'm okay. I told you to take the bed and leave with the couch. I'll get you some breakfast. Have you seen the paper? I glanced at it. That's a vague enough answer. Oh, I, uh, I don't take a lot of interest in those things. What things? Oh, Geneva conferences and things like that. The world in general seems to be in a complete mess. Well, I wasn't talking about the world in general, but uh, Bloomsbury in particular. No comment? Yes. Eat your eggs before they get cold. Hello? Yes, of course I've read the paper. So what? Are you turning yellow at the last minute, Foss? Where the hell is that girl of yours? Darak went to her place last night and she didn't come home. Well, find her and double quick. Yes, of course we've got the coat, but it doesn't mean a thing. We've ripped it from seam to seam. Yes. Well, 
He must have parked the case somewhere. The cloakroom at Victoria Station, at a guess. Obviously, Collins has either lost the ticket or he's trying to pull a fast one. No, no, leave it to me. I think we have the answer. Well? I put Max down to watch Collins' place, just in case. About half past eight this morning, a girl came out of the apartment and went to buy a loaf of bread. Max swears this girl is Michelle, Fossey's secretary. Michelle? So? What kind of double game is Foss playing? Finished? Yeah, thanks. Wait a minute. What's this? So that's why you were afraid of the police. It's silly of me, I know. They're not the same over here. One doesn't lose the habit easily. Which camp? The show at first, then Auschwitz. But you must have been just a kid. I was seven when the Nazis took us away. Who's us? My mother and sister were taken away too. We never saw my father again. Well, what about the others, your mother and your sister? Both, both dead. And now I'm mixed up in this, this dirty, filthy business. So that's it. There it is, Meredith. The fellow and the girl who witnessed Armstrong's fall Remember a man whistling for a cab. The description tallies with that of Collins. We're trying to trace the cab now. Yes, the rest of his movements checked too. The barber at Victoria, the club in Soho. He's in the clear, all right, except for one thing. What? He's covering for that girl. I'd like to know more about her. Get me records. So you see, I had to get a passport, any kind of passport, even a forged one. And when Voss offered me work as well, I was grateful. Yes, but didn't you know that this agency of his was just a cover-up for a racket? No, not at first. You see, Chuck, displaced persons have no country and no status. One loses hope of doing things honestly. I can understand that. I didn't mind so much at first. Not until this Armstrong affair. Then when I refused to work, Voss threatened to send me back. I had no choice. But don't you see, Michelle, if Voss could blackmail you, he could use the same racket on any or every one of those poor devils. Yes, you're right. I hadn't thought of that. Now tell me, what was in that case that Armstrong was carrying? Oh, engraving plates, seals, the equipment of a master forger employed during the war. Voss traced the case to Italy two years ago, then lost the trail. Later, he heard rumors that it had found its way to Tangier, and the rumor was correct. But Armstrong got there first. We ought to call the police, you know, then. Chuck, no. Well, what else can we do? Chuck, if you do, I shall be deported. I don't honestly think I could take that. Now, look, honey. We won't let anything like that happen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I've got an idea. Chuck, you're not fearing the police. No, not yet. Got an idea that might get you out of the way for a while. At least until things blow over. Who the devil's that? Hello, Rex. Now listen to me. Not before midday. Listen, will you? I need your help. That uh, cottage you've got down in Sunbury. What about it? Well, I need it for a few days. Is that all you woke me up for? I, I'd also like to borrow your car, the Humber, if you can spare it. Well, you can borrow my hangover as well if you want to. Just let me go to sleep. Okay, but don't forget to leave the keys out, all right? Thanks, Rex. Bye. Well, you're going into the country for a while. Where you'll be safe. You think it'll work? It's worth a try. Then I must go back to my flat. 
Now, wait a minute. Why? Well, I shall need some clothes. Oh, well, you just give me the key to your place, and I'll run over and pick up whatever you want. It's safer that way. Couldn't we go together? No, it's better my way. As far as we know, Boss and his friends have no clue that we've even met. I think it's better for all concerned if we keep it that way. Key? Chuck, I, I don't know how to thank you. Thank me? But let's not talk about that. I'll be back in time for lunch. Find everything you need in the kitchen. At least I hope so.
Michelle. Michelle. Mrs. Girl's passed out. Somebody get a doctor, quick. You're in luck. I am a doctor. Oh, thank God for that. Here, stand back. Here, give the doctor a bit of room. This is serious. We must take her to the hospital right away. Girl passed out, right under me barrier, you might say. Lucky that doc was around. What does she look like? Pretty, fine looking. Look at that. Clothes? Uh, a green coat with a white collar, I think, Gov. Yes, yes, yes. Shall I hang on to it until you come in? No. No, I'll send somebody up for it. Okay. You got a cold, Mr. Collins? Yes, sort of. Sounds like it. Take my tip. Stay in bed. I will. with a needle in the marketplace. She passed out, dropped like a log. As usual, a crowd gathered in no time, and this helped me get away without being spotted. Max did the rest as smooth as smooth. You got away clean? Sure. Good. What do you want us to do with the girl? Bring her up here? It'll take an hour or more for her to come round. Leave her in the car. She'll be perfectly safe. 
Anyway, Jody is down there. When Max arrives back, we'll get down to business. That's you, Max. You want a hammer today? slip after he left the girl's place. No matter. Judging by Meredith's reports, we were chasing a red herring. This could lead to the bigger fish. Do you think it'll work? It wouldn't be the first time. Well, what's the latest? No change. But they set up the tape recorder as I requested. So, you got away clean, eh? I don't understand how he found Never us. Never mind. Perhaps it's as well we have them both now. <sighs> Where's the ticket? What ticket? Quit stalling, you know what I mean. Armstrong passed it on to you, didn't he? What's your game? Who are you fronting for? Voss? <sighs> you know, you'll save yourself a whole lot of grief if you talk now. Why don't you ask Armstrong? Armstrong has blabbed enough already. But he won't again. Ever. Look, I tell you, I don't know anything about any ticket. If it wasn't in the coat, I don't know where it is. Come oh, on, let him be. The girl will be around in a moment. She won't be so tough. Go and get her. Speaking. What? When? Huh. We can guess where he's heading. No, no, you stick to him. We'll do the rest. Sarah? Now things are starting to move, eh? Goodbye. Stevens at Victoria. The case has been collected by Voss. Now we shall see. Hello? Just a minute. Hospital. That you, Dexter? You've got something on the tape? Does it make sense? Good. Yes, send it over right away. She's still out cold. No mind about her now. I've been talking to Sheeny on the phone. He's been watching Foss for me. So? So he got the plates. But he picked them up on Victoria Station a few minutes ago. He did? We can guess where he'll be heading. Uh -huh. If we move now, we'll get there first. And there'll be a nasty surprise for him. What about this one? And the girl? The other car. A length of rubber hosing. Johnny can see to that. I get the idea. Give him a couple of hours and switch off and clear the air. We'll take care of the rest when we come back.
Feeling better? Yes, I, I feel fine now. I seem to feel a little dizzy a while ago. Yeah, you passed out cold. What happened? Uh, never mind, we'll talk about it later. Where are we going? Rex's cottage. What then? Well, then I'll go to the police. I only hope it isn't too late. Too late? Uh, Voss picked up the case. Yes? I see. Well, I can guess where he's heading. Voss, he's on the move. Get cracking. Sorry, County. And make it snappy. Chuck. Yeah? Where are we? Walton. It's only a few miles now to the cottage. Is Chobham far from here? Yeah, why? Up to now, I've only been thinking of myself. Boss mustn't get away with that case and spread more misery. You're telling me? Near Chobham, there's a private airfield, and Boss is a plane there. Why didn't you tell me this before? Oh, it's you, Hans. For a moment, I thought Shut that... Shut up. I've had all I want from you. It's, uh, it, it's all here, Hans. I've checked it over. Thank you very much. Start her up, Max. What are you going to do?
told you to get out of here. 